Hi, um, so it's been a while since I've put a video up, um, but I really wanted to put something up um, before I do my workshop on Sunday in Footscray. And I guess it's been a really big month for us especially, and it may have been a big month for you. There was a huge lead up to Christmas, which brought a beautiful full moon, but it was really intense and not in a bad way, but there's always internal spiritual work to be done. So it's always an intense experience um, when these moons come up. So really every couple of weeks at the moment, um, you might be feeling um, like there's quite an intense feeling around you and you might get anxious or you might um, just get sick or feel like something needs to change um, because we're really being pushed now to spiritually become more aware and change. So uh, the full moon brought a really good release so hopefully um, the full moon release brought you to be able to just release something that you've been holding um, inside internally and um, then we've come to a new moon and the new moon has been about harvesting that release and that's been a another intense uh, spiritual space so um, something I wanted to talk about today was about our authority as people as individuals um, we all run our own lives but so much of our life is spent worrying about what someone thinks or what you know your parents think or guardians or grandparents it's there's usually at least one authority figure who you ring to say hey uh, I'm not sure how to do this and getting some advice but I think um, I know the trap that I've fallen into is not being independent in my choice and not having my own sovereignty around that choice and decision making and um, just having the understanding that my intuition knows best for me and yes, it's always good to get other ideas and other thoughts on things, but it is also really important to make our decisions for personally our, only ourselves. Um, even making decisions um, for my family, sometimes it's best for me to really tune into that intuition through meditation and then I'm able to go, okay, that's a good idea or that isn't a good idea. Um, so authority of oneself has been a really important um, kick in the butt, I think, uh, at the end of 2015, start of 2016. And you may have already felt like the world, the uh, year is already flying. And it really does feel like that. Um, you know, the human resonance is still increasing. We are just flying as a, as a planet. We're just turning and turning and turning more at a more increasing rate than ever. And so we're spiritually changing quicker. And you may feel that, you may feel like you know that there's something that you need to change. You know that things are getting busier and busier and you're feeling more stressed out. So you know that uh, when you quieten yourself down, it is the best space that you can be in. Um, over Christmas, I started reading, which I haven't done for two and a half years. I read on the internet, but I've decided to take myself away technologically and really focus on reading some books and feeding my mind in a way that's not uh, completely reduced down to Facebook and Instagram and just articles which are all fantastic ways of finding information and they are but um, just to be able to get myself away from the electromagnetic waves has been really important for my uh, health and um, I started reading a book called The Pilgrimage and there's some meditations in there that are second to none they have completely changed my life um, Kane also started reading the Tibetan art of positive thinking um, that he borrowed off my mum while we were down for holidays and that's had a medita some meditations as well that have completely changed how we feel about meditation, how we meditate and how we clear the noise um, because we thought we were meditating really well and then we realised how much noise we actually had um, because we hadn't expelled the root of some of these issues that were holding us back. Um, so 2006 is a massive, it's going to push us forward and we've already seen some people, uh, celebrities mostly, but you may have had deaths in your life too. I know that I've got friends who have had some sad passings um, and it's going to happen. Um, we are changing crystal, we're changing our crystallization and there is a time for people to pass and it just needs to be in a less traumatic space with a space of um, crystals and helping people onto their next path or um, wherever they need to go, wherever they feel need to go. And, 
and having that conversation of um, morality and having a conversation of what what's happening for them and and death doesn't need to be a frightening concept it can be a really um, beautiful space to be in and I know after reading the pilgrimage I've definitely got myself into a better space around it and it was always my one thing that I was really afraid of um, but I've worked through some of those issues and I've been able to understand why I felt like that and um, energy healing has helped that it's helped me just process things that happened when I was younger um, and not feel guilty for them um, energy is a really important thing to think about at the moment as well we are more sensitive we're becoming more sensitive even more sensitive which kind of seems a little crazy sometimes that it could, we could become even more sensitive but our thoughts are no longer private moments in our head our thoughts are being placed into the world they're a collective consciousness and sometimes I can think something or say it out loud and I can actually feel that person feeling that I'm sending that to them and it is really important to uh, guide those thoughts in a positive space I'm not saying that everyone has to be perfect we're not perfect but I think it is mostly about being aware about those thoughts and being aware that um, your negative disposition um, even talking about someone um, is often a reality of theirs something that they need to heal um, and it's reality of yours as well and so it's about sending healing and they will be able to um, heal their space or just maybe it won't become that much of a thought pattern between you two um, anymore and that is a really important part of um, not necessarily disconnecting with people but um, instead of feeding into that thought pattern um, it's about just sending healing and sending love and you know I've heard my mum talk about it a lot and she's always said to me just send love and I've never understood it and now I'm really really experiencing it yesterday I was on the train and we took our pram on and nobody offered their seats and that's fine I accepted that um, not everybody has that understanding or has been in a position where they might understand that position of standing with a baby and I could feel the guilt and it flooded in flooded in and I said to Kane I really had to push out it's okay you don't need to feel guilty and I spent probably five minutes just focusing on pushing that love back and slowly it did dissipate um, and afterwards we got off the train and I said to him in previous times I would have got really angry and I would have fed into that guilt but instead I pushed it back and not in a negative sense but just to say it's okay um, we don't necessarily we're not worried we don't need that um, we're okay and if I wanted it I would have said something so it's about um, really learning that I'm connected to you, you're connected to me in every sense. You know, we think that we're not connected to people and, you know, I, I could feel a massive wave when David Bowie passed away recently, um, four days, I think. I felt like the world was in mourning. Um, and they were. We were grieving over somebody who had touched a lot of people's lives. And, and I'm not someone who often um, takes on a celebrity as a... Uh, a position in life I, I look at everyone as very much the same I don't see people in a different sense of power I see them as just people and that's just something that I do and I don't look up to um, celebrities or things like or even political people I mostly I, I, I like writers if anything um, and I love the way people craft words but I don't necessarily have like that idolizing complex that um, a lot of people have in their life which is fine but I don't so I look at the person and I see that they're a person first and foremost and you know that was a person who a lot of people could relate to and were really thankful for and they were grieving so much and I could feel it I said to Kane like I can feel the grief in the global space and it was like you know it was the same when we had the Paris attacks um, and we could feel the global grieving and the global the, the global space people were in and it was heavy and you know the day that it was 42 degrees in Melbourne it was so heavy and I said to Kane you know I can feel the collective sadness 
And now that Alan Rickman um, has passed away as well, uh, I can feel, it, it's, I don't think it's as intense, but I can definitely feel a similar position. And I think even in that space, it's about just sending love, sending um, healing. Um, so just to talk about some wonderful things that happened for us spiritually while we were away, um, Kane and I connected in a way that we haven't before. And that's interesting because once again, we thought we were already connected and there's always more and more ways to connect. And New Year's Eve, we ended up going to a really awesome um, hippie doof in Adelaide. And um, it's kind of like our environment that we just don't get to anymore because we're in Melbourne working and we don't have family here. And so we just don't get away to these things as often with a little one. And um, it's definitely something we're going to change this year because going out into nature and being out in outdoors and just connecting with um, the trees and everything that's around us um, instead of connecting with a, a building um, and technology, which seems to be such the space that we're in these days, um, is going is something that is going to be really needed to ground ourselves this year. But um, we've decided that um, we went to this doof and we both were just in such a relaxed space. We were really, really connecting and we felt like we were meeting each other for the first time. And anyone that is into the idea of timelines, dimensions, you know, both of us believe that we do wander and especially when we're looking at um, not being in the present and we're just looking at being in the future or the past. Um, we often wander in our mindset and we're not present. And we came together again and we were able to see in the new year welcoming each other again and that was a really beautiful space. And after doing meditations uh, yesterday, we were able to do the same thing. So it's incredible how I think we get so lost in what happened or what's going to happen that we're not in the moment. And I was reading yesterday that when you're not in the moment, that's when tragedy occurs. Now, it may not be necessarily the worst tragedy, but this is when negative connotations happen in our life, things happen in our life, is because we're focusing on everything here or everything here and we're not looking at this is what's happening now. This is the most movable space. This is the most... Um, not time unlimited space is present. Um, it's the space that's past and present that is you is time limited. So back to my story. So we were welcoming each other for the first time again, and I was able to connect with my spiritual being, um, who guides me through uh, meditations and guides me through um, channeling and guides me through my work. So she guides me through my energy healing and she's an ancient Chinese um, beautiful lady who I connect with. And I'm still working out that relationship, but it's definitely a part of me. And I was told that I have to look in a sense of, um, I am of not dual personality, but I am not even dual soul, but there's, a, a connection there with a dual um, soul and so that's something that I was told I need to meditate on so I meditate on that every day and Cain we were getting a lot of messages about where we're going for our year um, because so much of our life here is uh, can be quite isolating not having family and and as a very heart-centered person I find that really um, hard and I know that a lot of people would if they're in that space, they understand that. If you're someone who's more logical, you may understand it, but you're definitely not going to feel um, the brunt of it so much. So I really miss my family and friends and being in Adelaide was like a really calm space for me. I felt at my absolute calmest and I felt like I could heal and I could connect a lot easier. And we were just having some idea on where we were going. And um, we were having, we, I actually had a vision and he had a very, we, I actually ended up holding it off for three days after New Year's to talk to him about it because it was quite an intense vision and, and I'm not someone that likes to, I don't like to create a situation or create a futuristic view. So I often keep, if, if something doesn't feel so important to say um, from a spiritual realm that's telling me something, I don't say it unless it's really important. 
um, and I won't say it if it's quite if it's may may hurt the person and you know a lot of um, psychic mediums are often in that same mental space they don't want to necessarily tell someone something that's going to affect them long term um, or their mental health or just to you know stop people creating something bad happening so um, I had a couple of visions but what I've had, and Kane had those exact same visions, so when we talked about it, he was like, wow, I had the same visions on New Year's Eve. So we got to come together with this, and I was able to meet these incredible people, and they, they're a couple that we met in Adelaide, and um, I was able to channel through for my friend, and I could feel so many previous lives for her, and it, it's probably the first time that I've, like really connected with someone in that space and um, I was able to heal a part of what was happening for her so she had a nerve system um, issue and I could feel it I could actually feel the electromagnetic pulses in her head so I just did some healing on her and you know um, every day I still send healing to her because one day I once I get back to Adelaide I really want to be able to work with her on that um, I think it's really important for her to um, get past that issue for her body. Um, she's an incredible person though, 17 and just been through so much and able to just have such a maturity on life and understanding um, to live day to day. I love it. So we met these beautiful people and we really connected and we had a, a couple of spiritual moments that were like mind blowing. And then we've come back and we've gone, okay, where now? We don't know. Um, I, every day I have to spend myself, spend time on myself grounding so that I'm not spending time on what could happen, what's going to happen, what's happened in the past and, you know, focusing on, okay, what is happening right now and how do I just work with that? So yesterday I was, we got a phone call saying that they were going to sell our rental property. Now we live in a rental property um, and we actually enjoy, you know, the fact that we don't, we don't have that seriousness of a mortgage and things like that in our life. And now this for the first time we're like a little bit like, we really want to live here a bit longer. But it's possible we could. And so I started dreaming up all these things that could happen. I started, you know, going saying to Kane, oh, I don't want to dream up all these things. But I, I was anyway. So I really, I had to really ground myself probably every couple minutes. I had to really stop my brain from diverting off into that space. And I've been the same with my study. I, I've really had to stop diverting my brain and and you know we're so used to doing that and we're used to uh, going to solution mode and we're used to going into a mode of um, I call it strategic planning I'm a strategic planner that's what I do I'm an event manager um, you know I plan in my head and I don't hold a diary you know Kay bought me a diary for Christmas and I was like do you think you'll use that because I only even I just have it in my head but I, I probably should put it down on paper because then it's not um, sitting up there but um, I'm strategic, so my first call of action was I um, need to plan this out, I need to plan this out. And so I really had to sit, my, sit myself back and say, no, you don't. You don't need to do a pro and con, con list. You don't need to uh, focus on what's happening you know, in the future because it hasn't happened yet. And if you will have those thoughts, you will will it into action. And it's that thought and action connection that is really important to uh, diminish to uh, dissipate it, it doesn't need to be there um, the the truth is believe in your heart believe in your intuition you know my gut is telling me we'll be we'll be fine and and through my channeling on New Year's Eve I was told that not to worry about money we will be fine and if we move we move and if we don't we don't and if we move into state we do we do it's not a big deal you know because I was worry I've always worried in the past about Kane's work, it's the best in Melbourne, but if it happens, it happens. Like, you can't change anything of the future, you can't change anything of the past. All you can do is live in the present and stay in that space as much as you can. And it's about becoming aware, it's about being aware when you're starting to drift or when you're starting to uh, get worried, and it's, it's just not important. It's not, if you can, uh, you know, dissipate that control you will see your life flow so much better. And, and you know, that's when we talk about like manifestation and the authority of who you are. 
um, you have also, you have your own authority. It's not in the same authoritative space that someone else wants to hold over you. And I meet authoritative people now, and I think, wow, I used to be like that. I'm really sorry to everyone I was ever like that over. Um, yeah, it, it may, and it makes me realise that a lot of the relationships that I've had with friends or even uh, partners were very authoritative. I, I needed that authoritative behaviour towards me um, to keep me in control so that I could keep someone else in control or even just to keep myself in control. So it's really interesting how those archetypes mix. And something that I've noticed lately is if I meet someone who's in that space, they're often quite... Um, egotistical and you know they're, they're trying to map out how something's going to happen so that they can be the celebratory person on top and in the end if you're talking from an authoritative view to someone who's more heart-centered that we're gonna always look a little bit too flowy too hippie you know oh way too chilled in life but this is where my space is where I'm not stressed this is where my space is where I'm not worry this is where my space is where I'm happiest and so this is where I need to be to take care of myself my family and to a point where I'm not having a breakdown every month because do you know what three months four months ago before September that's where I was and that is not my happy space that is my I want to destroy my mental health space and my body and you know I've changed so much doing these meditations um, that I've changed my eating habits completely. Um, I've changed how I sleep. I, you know, read a book before bed. I, I used to sit on my phone or I'd sit on the computer up until I went to bed. I'm going to bed earlier. I'm just looking after myself because I'm feeling better. And look, it, it, I often can meditate three or four times a day. They're not long meditations. It's just to clear my space, clear my noise. So it's probably a really long video, but I thought I just wanted to talk about a bit of experiences that we had over New Year's. And, you know, as practitioners, we feel like um, we're in a completely different space to heal people um, and, in, and in a completely different space to um, relate and to be able to um, guide people into what's happening for 2016. So if you haven't seen on our Facebook page or our website, we have a vision board workshop. I have a, I'm have i hosting the vision board workshop on Sunday and it's in Footscray and it's between one, two, three. Um, and as a part of the workshop, I will have a booklet that I'm putting together just about a lot of these heart-centered um, spaces and how, how to let it flow in your life. And a bit about what vision board means from a heart center space um, but where you're not focusing on what's happening, you know, I want to make a huge goal for what's down the track or looking at what's happened in the past. It's purely just what is going to work for me intuitively right now. Um, and a obstacle meditation. So obviously a cleansing meditation for chakras, but also just a relaxing space so you can get yourself into that real intuitive space to do a vision board. Um, but the obstacle meditation is actually a really fantastic meditation on, um, working out um, how to get to that root of that main obstacle. And, you know, my obstacle was emotional eating and I've been able to curve it doing the meditation whenever I feel like I want to, well, I can feel that emotion attached to that behavior. So when I feel depressed or down or sad or just anxious or stressed, um, there's a lot of things that go with my emotional eating. Um, I don't put the behavior into eating, I put the behavior into meditation. And so it could be a couple minutes. It could just be like, I could even be sitting with my daughter and just sitting for a couple minutes and just imagining the obstacle meditation. Um, and it's really curved it. And you mentioned that for 28 days and it's meant to really help you. So I've probably been doing it for about 14. And I have to say that I have not been emotionally eating at all. Um, I only eat when I'm hungry. And it has changed my whole idea to it because I might have, I've done lots of different things in my um 15 to 20 years of trying to not have a yo-yo diet all the time and it always go up and down up and down and this is the only time that I've ever been able to really diminish and dissip dissipate that obstacle um, so that will be at the workshop and I think it's a really really important thing to be able to um, get yourself into a space of all right what's that root what's that cause let's just get rid of that so I can then flow for the rest of the year because um, we've all got something that really um, anchors us down 
Um, so yeah, the, and then there'll be some light refreshments and doing the and creating a vision board. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, and to those who have already booked, I'm really thankful. Thank you so much. Um, I really look forward to guiding you through this. Um, and I better go because I need to start um, finishing just putting together everything. So I hope that my words today have been interesting and a um, different, maybe brought a different awareness onto some of the topics. Um, and, you know, really start to harness that authentic self and really start to harness that meditation within you. Um, because it's really important when you wake up to clear your thoughts. You know, we dream and we, and we, and we cross our dreams with the global space you know you've got like it, it's incredible how much we are collectively um, entwined with each other so you know if anything make sure you just meditate before you go, wake up when you wake up and before you go to bed um, and start to just really do things for you it's really important to get yourself in a good space and then everything around you will flow so I hope you have a fantastic day and um, look forward to talking to you soon bye